So energy pie charts. So we're going to use pie charts to talk about energy transfer. In fact, if you've done the skate park energy lab, it's a simulation that it's got a skater on different tracks and it's got a little pie chart that keeps moving with it, how much kinetic, potential energy, etc. So it's a good way to uh, represent graphically um, energy transfer. We can do it with equations, bar charts, et cetera, et cetera. So energy, I've already described uh, that both force and energy are just simply ways to uh, describe an interaction. Uh, forces are vector quantities that are directed. Energy is not a vector quantity. It's not directed. It's an accounting tool. In one sense, there's no such thing as energy, just like there's no such thing as force, it's not a substance, no such thing as speed in terms of stuff, they are measurements of change within some system. And so the interesting thing about energy as a quantity, um, a scalar quantity, is it's, it's conserved like momentum is and mass and whatnot. So energy pie chart. So here on your uh, energy pie charts handout, there are three kinds of energy, all right? And so uh, <clears throat> we have E sub PG for gravitational potential energy. Yes, you are. You are supposed to be seeing this. So gravitational potential energy well, it's on your sheet. It'll be on the screen shortly. Uh, we have initial, I'm sorry, not initial, but internal energy for our purposes right now. The internal energy of an object will be the energy that it obtains through frictional heating. So for the sake of mechanics, that's what internal energy is. It's actually way more complex than that. But for what we're doing, that's going to do. If you drag something around long enough, it'll get hot it and the ground underneath it. And then we have kinetic energy. That's the energy due to motion. So we're going to deal with three and only three kinds of energy for this unit. Potential due to gravity, kinetic due to motion, internal energy due to frictional heating. And so we have these uh, abbreviations, big E for energy, And then kinetic energy, or we might just go K for kinetic energy due to motion. All right, so those are our three kinds of energy. So here we have a box. Number one, a box slides down a hill and comes to a rest after some distance along the flat part. So it is the case that According to this problem, there was some distance along the flat port part that it came to rest at. And from a center of mass viewpoint, which is, we want to treat this like a point particle, there's some height that the box changed. It went from a height to zero height. Okay. So H equals zero down at the bottom of this thing. Unless a problem specifically states it, uh, there are no, uh, if it says frictionless, then there's no friction. Otherwise you assume friction, all right? Especially since we know it came to a rest after sliding. The only sensible force to do that would be a frictional force, sure. There could have been people blowing on it with straws, like uh, what's that Olympic sport The uh, where they're pushing the brooms around and it's this thing on ice? Curling, you know, it could be curling, but uh, not likely. Still a friction game there, but a low friction game. So really what I have is I have, I have three critical spots to deal with 
in terms of the motion of this object and I'm going to do energy pie charts. So at the start here, I'm going to uh, do three absolutely perfect and equally sized circles. Repeat after me. Those are perfect circles, all equal size. It's important that they be equal size so that we're not bringing new energy uh, into the system. All right. So initially, what kind or kinds of energies do I have when the box is at rest at the top of this hill? All gravitational potential. So E sub PG, okay? Which, by the way, happens to be MGH. It's, it's work done by gravity, all right? So it's MGH. Let me uh, fix that M. Uh, so just the pie charts we're using E for energy, but work and energy are interchangeable ideas. So I'm going to bring that to your attention. What about at the bottom of the hill? Is there any more gravitational potential energy? No. What has it gone to? Anything else? And friction or internal energy. So I would expect that there would be some small amount of internal energy and a bunch of kinetic energy. If there were no friction, it would all be kinetic. All right, so friction took away some of its potential and kinetic energy got the rest. So the energy due to its motion, half mass speed squared. Then it goes some distance and comes to a stop out here in the last part. So uh, what energy is present in the object when it comes to rest? It had no more gravitational potential. If it's not moving, it ain't got no kinetic. What's left? Internal, all internal. So there's two ways to look at the energy balance that would come from this. Now, by the way, let's remind ourselves. Uh, kinetic energy would be one half mv squared. Internal energy due to friction would be the force of friction times the length or in our case, D for distance. So the, a force times a distance will be the work done by that force or the energy transferred in or out of the system. Depends on how you define the system. And then again, um, energy internal here would still be friction times distance. Now I need to go back to uh, D is not what's happened on the incline plane. This would have to be length L if we um, wanted to do that. So obviously the D is for the flat part and there'd be some other displacement for the, the uh, incline plane. So we'll use L for that just for, for sake of. Now you didn't, you're, this energy pie chart uh, assignment isn't asking you to write the equations. I'm just telling you, oh, by the way, these are the equations. Work is always force times distance. Kinetic energy is always half mv squared, period, all the time. It's never anything else. And for our purposes, internal energy or work done by friction would be force of friction times the distance that that friction operated. So this would be the pie charts, okay? If you wanted to, um, we could have an in-between uh pi for this region and so maybe at some point uh you know in the middle it's kind it's got a smaller amount of internal energy than it does at the bottom of the hill because it hasn't frictioned enough and in the middle maybe it's split 
maybe I got half as much potential and who knows, that might be a middle state that we could do. And then same over here. If I wanted to put a pie chart in the middle, you know, I could just say, well, somewhere in the middle, it's half kinetic and it's half internal. Something like that. So, you know, up to five pie charts from start to finish of the motion. All of, all of the potential going into frictional work or heating. We would recognize that as, as, as heat energy. All right, number two. A book is pushed at constant velocity across the floor. So velocity is not equal to zero, but the change in velocity is zero. That would be the symbolic way to encode for a book is pushed at constant velocity across the floor. But then at some dis some point, the pushing stops and the book travels some distance before coming to rest. And so at the end of this one, uh, or in this region, the change in velocity is negative, slowing down, still non-zero speed, but it's slowing down. And then over here, velocity equals zero. So it's clearly come to a rest. So these would be ways you could symbolically encode for um, this situation. And so we have, again, three regions that we could pay attention to. So let's, uh, and it's still, we, it didn't say frictionless, so we assume friction, all right? So we could put some, uh, um, pie charts here. So initially, in fact, I'll put some over here. So four pie charts we could do. So how many uh, energies do we have in the first pie chart, far left? Well, I mean, it's being pushed in that region, right? Well, I guess we need to make sure, you know, is it being pushed in this region? So let's say that over here, V equals zero, but it's not being pushed, right? So there's no pie chart there. It has no energy other than whatever internal energy something has because it's made of stuff, you know? atoms bubbling around all right everything's we ignore that because everything's got that all right so we just kind of we won't bother with that one now this next one it's moving so it's got to have some kinetic energy and friction's present so it's got to have some internal energy but there's no nowhere in this problem is there any gravitational potential so it's all kinetic and internal energy so i'll assume that it has a small amount of frictional heating and a lot of kinetic. All right. And then when we stop uh, pushing on it, it still has kinetic energy because it's moving, but I think I would expect to see a growing amount of internal energy as the kinetic energy dissipates. And then over here, when it's no longer moving, it can't have any 
kinetic energy, it would all be internal energy due to frictional heating. So pretty simple set of pie charts. And again, uh, kinetic energy is always half mv squared. And for our purposes, uh, internal energy is going to be friction uh, times whatever distance you're dealing with. So this could be distance 2. This could be distance one, etc. So that would be kind of an easy one for that one. Then finally, the Atwood machine. We did the force and energy symbolics the other day, last week sometime. And those equations aren't going to change at all. But the uh, doing of pie charts... So we would have to make some assumptions here. Like for instance, is mass one gonna hit the ground before mass two goes over the pulley? All right, that's a good assumption, okay? And so we'll, um, so initially, Initially, what do we have in this system before it starts moving? So they're at rest. It's all potential energy. And, you know, I sort of have drawn it, and the picture sort of makes you think that box one is about twice as high as box two. And so what that means is that there's a two to one ratio, meaning three total parts. If you were just kind of eyeballing this picture, are we required to do that? No. All we need to have technically for a pie chart is that if something's got more, that piece of the pie is bigger. All right. So let's make the potential gravity for mass two will be the small piece and the potential energy due to gravity for mass one will be the big piece. And then finally, and we'll have to make some assumptions, uh, the height of mass one equals zero. We'll make that assumption. All right. What will that mean? So when the height of mass one equals zero or right at that point, just before. It's, you know, it's a nanometer off the ground, essentially an imperceptible amount of gravitational potential energy, but it's still moving. Both boxes still have a speed. So just before impact, what should we expect? We should expect that, uh, well, one, mass two is going to go higher than mass one, right? So that means that gravitational potential energy well, that's not going to work, right? I need for the gravitational potential energy of mass two to be bigger than what mass one was. So instead of mass one having two thirds, now I made mass two have three fourths of the potential energy. Now, if mass one is bigger than mass two, then I would expect that the kinetic energy of mass one would be bigger than the kinetic energy of mass two, even though they have the same speed. Don't trick yourself. I mean, they do have the same speed because they're coupled by the rope, but one mass is bigger than the other. The bigger mass is gonna have more kinetic energy because it's half mass speed squared. So all the factors are the same in the kinetic energy equation except the mass part. Bigger mass, bigger energy. 
right? So we have this trade-off. And then what you could expect is maybe if there was a midpoint uh, where the heights are the same. So what if we said, uh, you know, midway when H1 equals H2, all right, we could do that. And what we have there, again, it's MGH. So let's say that we have, uh, this ought to work. The potential energy of mass one would be bigger than the potential energy of mass two. And the kinetic energy of mass one would be bigger than the kinetic energy of mass two. So sort of, um, there's multiple ways you could do that. And it doesn't really matter what the proportions are as long as you're able to say that the two energy parts for the thing with bigger mass is bigger, all things being equal. Because this is a point where the heights are the same, but the masses are different, and the speeds are the same. Speed never changes. Their speeds are always the same for both blocks. And only once is their height the same. So that would be a midway uh, point uh, for doing that. So that's the pie chart, uh, energy pie chart.